Now I'm going to be tying another. Uh, this, I've been tying one or two dial backs at the moment, and this is another really uh, good pattern and uh, one that fishes, especially in the, the height of summer, uh, does really well. Now it represents quite a big midget comes off. The the hook I'm size I'm using this is a size ten. The midge we get here in the UK especially and we do get the large, they're not like tiny wee things that comes off the river. And we do get them as well. But this is a good size and you can tens and twelves is the size are ideal. Now hook choice is up to yourself, but I'm using the heavy hook. This is the full and mill, that's the competition heavyweight, size ten. Thread I'm going to be using, this is the uni thread. Uh, 8 in red. Quite simple, we start to the eye, I'm just going to move the waist as we wind down. You take the thread to just slightly by the point of the hook, which is there. Now we've got a large natural brown, in this case got cackle. Now this is going to be for the tail and the throat in this case. Now if you bring out your fibre, 90 degrees from the stem of the, the feather, they naturally line up, so when you do that, you just take them out tail them off. You're looking for a tail length around the body length. Just tie it over the back. A couple of turns. And it just turns this heading down. We then trim that away and lay enough for a, a head, a good head. At least a mil and a half, two mil. Now, the, the rib of this fly it's just a, a silver wire. This is number 27. This is from Vineyards, which is a small small wire. So I'm just going to catch this on, full length of the body, just a turn to hold it. Now the other thing I'm going to be using is a medium red holographic tinsel. In this case I'm going to basically catch it on the top. This is going to be the back of the dial back. Just catch it. Now at this point just secure it now as I wind up a tap, the reason I'm tapping is it basically, as you wind the thread, it encourages the fibre or whatever you're tying in to follow the thread. And if you wind and tap, it just stops that. The other way to stop it is to wind slightly at an angle. And that'll do the same. So that's it, basically tidied up. We take the thread quickly back down. Now we tie in. This is basically uh, a dumping in my own. It's, it's basically just rabbit. There's a wee touch of UV, I don't know if you can see it there. Just in a natural, uh, kind of light bright. Which I've blended through it. So you don't need much. Just lightly dub it on. Slide it up. Now as you wind up, I don't mind if the red shows through, that's why I'm using red thread. Just keep it light as you can, just enough to tie it in. And wind up till you get to this point here, just about head, a good head length as I would say, because we're going to put some dubbing at the front. There we are. Now I'm just going to use my fingers to brush down or bring down the fibre on the top, just lift it down. I'm going to bring over the red holographic, just catch it, hold it down. Two or three turns. Trim that away. We do a bring a silver wire up as a rib. We do a turn straight right on top of the tail. Let me show you there, which protects it. And then we basically rib. So when we come over, then we tighten up once we're by. So we come over, tighten up, come over once from the bottom, tighten up. That stops you taking the the tinsel round. Now I'm just going to roll my fingers through the fibre, follow up with the thread, 90 degree bend into the wire. That basically locks it in. Make sure it's secure. Keep a hold of the thread and bend and break away the wire. And there we are. So we've got our red holographic back. And a lot of people say, well, the fish will not see that, it's on the top, but they do. The wall. It does lift the colour, you'll see it in the water, it does show up. So anyway, there we are. This is stroke it back. Now the, the cheeks on this, I've got goose bites dyed red. 
Now the, the re this works for a couple of reasons. Uh, now it's a wee bit, see down here, I'm going to show you, I just lifted this out. Now this is just a wee bit heavy for cheeks. So what I do is come up a wee bit further, you'll find if you go up the, the bar, you'll really see it's much finer. You can cut a wee bit closer to the tip, but I prefer to basically get closer. Now, before I started saying that, now, this is a good pin fry pattern. It works really well for pin fry. Uh, so it's worth doing, uh, especially when you see a lot of small fry along the bank. It's certainly worth putting this on. Now, taking two out. Now, what I like to do here is put two out together. Trim the ends away. Just make sure these are level. And I'm going to take the corners off slightly and the, out, the outside of the, the bayet. I don't know if you can see that. Slightly to taper them and then from the top, the natural curve. Now they're slightly long on the other, so I just tap with my finger so they're both the same length. You want to be able to see them, so you're looking round about maybe a couple of mil from where you're going to tie them in. And on the side, come around with a couple of turns. See how they're sitting? That's fine. Now then what I do is simple is just take the thread to the eye. Keeping the thread tight, I can then break these off. And there, as you can see, that's where you want them to see them sit. Now for the throat, I'm just going back to the same hackle. And you can put the throat on first before you do this. It's up to yourself, it doesn't matter, either way. Now I'm bringing again fibre straight out. You're looking round, much the same as the tail length or just to the end of the body. Now I do a pinch and loop up the way. And it's basically putting it to the side, or holding it underneath with your fingers, finger thumb. Do a pinch and loop up the way, do the same again. A couple of turns to hold. See it sits fine. Sure it's not going to move like it did there. Come in, use your finger. Now you can't, as I said before, you can take it to the side and then trim so you can see what you're doing. And the thread's out the way if you do that. Now let's put a wax on my thread. Give me that wee bit extra grip. Now the head of the fly is the same as the body. I'm just going to use the same dubbing. You could use a darker dub in black, it's worth doing. Uh, it basically highlights the head if, if you're using this as a small fry pattern. But uh, the, and the dub in the same dub is good. Now when you take the thread slightly to the eye, off of the thread up. Now keep my fingers a bell away from the dub just so I don't flatten it too much. And it allows it to basically spring out slightly. And then I'm going to wind. Coming back through with a wee bit of dubbing as I get to the eye, which basically that's tying it in a wee bit. Just use your fingers to stroke it back three or four turns in front. A wee bit of varnish on your thread. Quick finish. Trim away. There we are. Yeah, that's a that's a good wee pattern. It's a, it's a style that works. The uh, dial back is a great style, no matter what you do. But this colour combination works really well. Uh, and it's certainly worth having it. If you want to change it slightly, I have another version is to put a pearl back along it. Just use a, a medium or a number 14 pearl along the back. Uh, or you can put it along the sides, which I do a lot, which gives a great, uh, another very good uh, pin fry pattern. It's, see, it's, this is a good style for that. If you want a wee bit more varnish, just touch a wee touch, just in the top rear, just to lighten or brighten the head a bit. So see, a good pattern tied in a size being 14s are good, uh, as well as a size 10, but this is a, a good size at this time of the year. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, uh, and again, if you enjoy the videos, uh, please subscribe, uh, it does help, and thank you for watching.